Hey guys, hope you're having a fantastic day. Your old buddy Tim Knox back with Revolved Realty with my old buddy Stephen Allen from The Mortgage Firm. How are you, sir? Awesome. How are you doing? The Mortgage Firm sounds like the CIA. Absolutely. Who are you with? I'm with The Mortgage Firm. Hey, flash the badge. That's, That's it. all it, it is. Well, as long as you get the, the job done, right? <laughs> exactly. Hey, uh, in this series of videos, we've been talking about uh, Mortgage 101. Everything you wanted to know about a mortgage but were afraid to ask. Mm. And so I think this is video seven in the series. Today, we're going to talk about the length of your mortgage. You know, some folks get a 15-year mortgage. Some folks get a 30-year mortgage. What is the difference and how do I know which is best for me? Really boils down to what are you comfortable paying? As little as possible. As little how as possible. How often do you hear that? All the time. <laughs> Surprisingly, though, what we can approve people for, it's much, much more than what they're ever willing to pay. Yeah. So that's something that you want to look at. But mm -hmm. the main thing is, is... If you go on the internet, look for different opinions of what mortgage you can find, you'll find 10 different opinions sure. about what mortgage you should do. What it really dials down to is what's comfortable for you, how long do you plan on being in this home, and can you afford a 15-year monthly payment? That, that's one of the things we've talked about on other videos is you may be approved for this amount, right. but you may only be comfortable paying this amount a month. Of course. So that's something you've got to look at just because you are approved for $200,000 doesn't necessarily mean you can afford it, right? Right, right. And the difference is, is you really do save in interest mm -hmm. on a 15-year versus mm -hmm. a 30-year. Uh, there's even mortgages out there, a 25-year, a 20-year. There's all kinds of options available to you. Right. What it really the boils down to is if you look at the length of time that you're in the home and the amount of money that you will pay over a period of 30 years, and then you look at it on a 15-year, you are saving almost half the amount of money that you wow. would pay in interest. In some cases, well over $200,000. So you are better served, if you can afford it, to do a 15-year because you are going to save a ton of money in interest. Right. And the common thing that people think is that my payment is going to be doubled. Mm -hmm. Whatever my payment is in a 30-year, mm -hmm. double it, and that's a 15-year. That's, that's wrong. What, what is the math? Is so there, math? there is not a specific formula to use, but the rule of thumb is you're going to save in interest. That's mm -hmm. the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. You're saving an in interest, and when you save an in interest over a period of 15 and 30 years, that means that the amount of money that you're paying every month is putting more towards principal in the beginning of the loan rather than waiting until you're about seven, eight years into the loan mm -hmm. to start making that principal impact on okay. the loan. And I would assume you also have to consider how long do you plan on being in the property? Exactly. Chances are if you're young, you're buying your home like for us. the first time. Absolutely. You're buying it for the first time <laughs> you probably are not going to live there for the next 30 mm -hmm. years why finance it for 30 years right you know if, if you're going to move out there's a lot of options available to you and i think people assume that you just have to get a 30-year mortgage because that's what's most common mm -hmm. check with your mortgage professional check what's available to you there's many options that can really help you to save as much money as possible okay so the moral to the story is check with someone who knows way more than you do like my friend Steven here. Yeah, there's no and right or wrong answer. There, and, and do what's comfortable for you. The exactly. worst thing you could do is become house poor oh, yes. by overextending yourself and then you wind up in trouble because you can't make your house pay. Of course, because you can always pay more towards your principal sure. and do the same thing, but it's what's comfortable for you in that monthly okay. obligation. And that's one thing we're going to talk about on another video is how you can actually reduce the term of your mortgage by paying a little more each month. Yes. All right. Hey, if uh, you want to know more, contact my friend Stephen at 256-724-2500 or themortgagefirm.com forward slash Huntsville. Very good. And of course, if I can help you in any way when it comes to real estate, 256-679-0704, Tim at Revolved.com. You go out, have a great day and whatever you do, don't be house poor. That's right. That's terrible, great right? Advice. Great I have advice. a great house. I can't afford it. Hey. <laughs> no, I mean, I really have a great house. I. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time.